Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, today I'm doing an oil change on my Hussberg T300. Uh, going away next weekend, so just thought I'd get it prepped and ready. Uh, first thing I'll do is uh, drop the oil out of it. So what we need is so uh, gear oil. I get this from um, uh, any of your KTM stores. Uh, that's what they re recommend for the Bergs. I'd I have a uh, manual for it uh, which recommends all the scheduled servicing but as per usual in this mess of a garage I might have misplaced it so I'm just going to do the basics I'm going to do an oil change air filter change uh, just check the chain uh, lubri lubricate the chain check the battery and um, charge it up and then give it a quick run to make sure it's ready for the weekend so first things first, uh, just some of the tools I use to do the oil change. Um, I, I use both half inch and quarter inch drive um, socket sets. So the half inch with a uh, 30 mil socket uh, is for the bolt just here. That will drain your oil out. Then there's another one here that says oil level. You remove that when you're filling it up. You put this bolt back in, you fill it once it's drained out fully of course you uh, open this up when it's nice and level like it is on the stand you then um you then uh fill it up till it comes out here close it up job done uh, i tend to i tend to just look at the manual and just get the specs it takes 800 milliliters of oil so i normally just uh, measure out 800 millimeters put it in and that's close enough for me um sorry i didn't go through the tools earlier so um to carry out this, you need a um, you need the an oil pan, um, <laughs> unless you want to get it all over the floor. I use a I use a uh, stand, uh, any stand. I've got no nail one. It's just a cheapie, but it does the job. Uh, like I said earlier, the quarter inch drive with an eight mil socket, half inch drive, thirteen mil, and we're good to go. Uh, also, uh, funnels helpful here. It's a uh, tight it's not easy pouring it in without the funnel so make sure you've got a good funnel all right so we're going to drain it out drain out the oil and very carefully undo it now I normally have some sort of drop sheet underneath the bike like what I have here to make sure it doesn't go everywhere um, living in suburbia with a garage attached to the house um, the oil smell will travel through the house if you don't stay on top of it I've also got kitty litter ready to go if it does make a mess so it's about to let go a bit further and look at that so, so we give the give it a, give the um, bold bit of a wipe down look for any evidence of metal, metal. as you can imagine metal is bad um, or any other foreign element in it make sure when you clean it down you make sure you don't miss anything now it's going to get on the frame here so make sure you wipe that down when you're done uh, it doesn't look too bad nothing too surprising um, but that's all right we keep it nice and clean um, inspect the washer um, people like to change these every every time I'm not that fussed on it so Everyone has their own opinion on it, each their own. Um, now, um, I'll let that drain out for a bit. Uh, problem with it on the problem with it on the on the stand is it doesn't drain out fast. So I, sometimes I can I'll pull it over, help with the draining, help it drain out a bit better. Um, so they don't hold that much oil in the scheme of things. So. You've really got to be quite um, religious with the oil changes. So while we let that drain out, the majority of it's come out. I normally like to prep other items. Um, you have to excuse the mess, there's shit everywhere. I'll normally, I'll normally uh, clean the filter and put a new one on. Uh, treat it with, uh, what do I use? I use a things of Bell Ray oil, uh, filter oil foam, um, just to give it, help it. I normally just give the chain a wipe down, make sure there's nothing too bad on it. I've normally done that after a ride anyway. Make sure the chain's clean, make sure all the crap's off it. Normally give it a wash 
first thing I do when I get back home. Uh, I've normally sprayed it as well, but I'll give it another spray. Just um, liberal amounts. And just go along and I'd gently wipe the excess off any excess I see. And job done. Now that oil seems to have drained out, still a few little drops, so leave it a bit longer. Um, normally like to give the do this after as well. Just wipe down any excess. Get it off the frame because it will leak onto the frame front and back. Alright, so I couldn't find the uh, owner manual, my owner's manual, with all the torque specifications, so I went online, looked it up for the um, oil drain plug, and just giving it a. I like to keep, make sure it's nice and clean. Make sure everything's clean. You don't want any contamination in there. Okay. Yeah, nothing. Alright. Okay. Oh, I'll just finger tighten it first. Nice. There we go. Alright, so. Found the setting was 20 newton meters on my my torque wrench. Oops, wrong way. So what I'll do, I'll just tighten it up with this one. Get it firm. Yeah, it's firm. That's probably enough, but oh, do not drop your torque wrench. Alright. Uh, we're just gonna very carefully. There we go, job done. You can give another turn for tight. Right, we're good there. Now, now it's 800 mils. Well, you can undo this little fella here, which we aim to do just to be on the safe side. So we'll undo it here, very carefully. Give it a wipe. Should be bone dry, it hasn't been run for a while. Very carefully undo it. One thing I like about the Motorex, this um, flexible hose makes it a lot easier. You can actually get away with, you should be able to tip it in without getting it everywhere. You're going to go nice and slow. So according to the manual, it's 800 millilitres. Now on the side there, there's a, um, on the side of a bottle, there's a level indicator such yeah. feels like you tipped a litre in you've only done about 200 mil yeah. nice and patient you see keep tend to keep an eye on that oil level comes out of that you've got enough but as I said this is a good indicator right here, put it down on the floor, yep, I put just under 400 mils in, so halfway there, nice steady hand, so that, these motor X, the, um, it's pretty much doing what I, um, what, yeah, 
Yep, and then she's running out, so we've got enough there. Uh, we'll give that a wipe down. Put that, close that back up. Let it drain out a bit. Clearly I've gone, yeah, gone over 200, so you can let it drain out. There we go, close her up. How much over do I go? 100, 200, a little bit. That's why we have the floor covering. And I'll wipe that down shortly. Clean up there. I said, big fan of wiping everything down, making sure it's free contaminants. That didn't help. Wipe it down again. Check, it's free of contaminants. Back on it goes. Okay, so the air filter on the left hand panel. These normally just unclip, um, pull it up, pull it out very carefully, just remove it. Should be a quick release type of system. Still be very careful with it. Last thing you want is to take damage to these. Um, filter looks delightful. We're going to take it out. Clean around it. Give it a clean ready first. As you can see, mine's full of dog hair. And that comes out. All kinds of filth. Right. And then this plastic part, we're going to swap it over with a new one. Just unhook it like such. These filters can be reused. They can, you can wash them, get them cleaned, and put them back into use. Um, they'll be on another video at another time. Everything here is covered in dog hair. Wipe the wipe it all down. Get all the crap off it. Probably if you've got an Alsatian or a Malamute or something like any long-haired dog, you find if it dog sleeps in the, anywhere near where your bikes are, it's going to get covered in hair. And you've got to get it off, you don't want that going through your engine. I like to just clean it. So, normally clean in and around the field area. Get all the crap out, especially inside here. And wipe it down as best I can. And then I apply and put some grease. Help with the seal. Just around the right way. It's pretty nice and 
about So with the filter in, uh, I'm getting it ready, just going off road uh, through parklands and that, you um, really don't want to have your blinkers on. So uh, the indicator is quite easy, um, you just unflip it like that, that'll, that'll bring the undo there, and undo the other side. I'm going to just roll my hands along it. That, that pops forward and you can take the blinkers off it's just a case of taking the blinkers off just undoing taking the blinkers off just unclip that on or we tape that up it's optional then just unbolt that one that one and we're good so i've removed the i've removed the uh, blinkers and these the two ends we're going to tape them up just to prevent water uh to excessive moisture getting in there um, Smarter move, would, but I don't bother too much. You take one side, one colour, one side, the other. So it's a quick identification for the indicators. We just plug it in and test the indicator beforehand. But ideally, I like to, um, I like to do um, protect the little pins that you probably can't see on the video. But there's two little pins in there. I like to keep them covered up and protected as best I can. Okay. So I'm going to remove the blinkers and the. Uh, lower mud guard um, it all comes off in one piece here and it's held on by a few bolts uh, which might have missed might have fallen i've removed two already i wish undo there and there now as you can see if you over tighten them we'll put the wrong size in see the damage they can do to your e guard i learned that that was a mistake i made earlier in the piece also you have to you need to take your seat off to get to the connection which is a star piece by the way and it just goes in there undo, undoing once I'm done the seat comes straight out straight off and all right, so we're going to undo a few bolts. could undo these two here but I prefer to chase it back it's this one here disconnect it and pull it right out so it's just this connection here just very gently undo it there it is now to get it out you'll need to undo this this bolt here lift that up that goes straight out. We'll find trusty. I don't think that'll fit. No, nope. didn't think so. Yeah, I think yeah. that one's not the right size either. That I believe is a six mil. This one here. Six. Perfect. Undo. Yeah, you gotta put that straight back on, so keep it close. Very carefully pull that up. Slide it through. 
Gonna get caught here. We're gonna wiggle it a little bit. It comes through the hole. Out. Let gravity do its thing. Reinstate that other piece. That goes back in. We need two bolts there and there, which I removed earlier. We're going to put them back in. That's so we've got our bolts back in place, uh, nuts, screws, whatever you want to pull them, back in place. So we've got our screws back in place there and there. Uh, it's all ready to go. Yeah, I'll put this on because I couldn't be bothered editing. Um, and what you see it's dirty, just give it a clean, so I'll, I'll, give, I'll give there a clean, I'll clean this, give that a clean up, just with some spray and wipe, and get it ready. Uh, next thing, we're going to put the, we're going to put everything back together. Uh, I'm going to put the lovely pipe, pipe guard back on. Uh, it's going to get cleaned first because it's disgusting, and then it's ready to go back on. Uh, one of the more important things to do, even though you're going for a ride, you're going to clean it when you get back. Give it a clean before you actually go riding. You're going to find any bits that are missing, a nut, a bolt, washer, um, something damaged. By wiping it down, you're going to find these things. Now, just before I put any covers back on, I like to clean the exhaust right up, get it nice and clean. Yeah, and you come around here and you, oh, yeah, not that this matters because I'll take it off, but the the horn which I'll remove but yeah things like that now wiring undone things like that just make sure it's not meant to be connected to anything yeah a clean bike you'll find any issues really quickly if it's cleaned you get in the habit of cleaning it make sure it looks good another reason for that you rock up somewhere your bike looks like shit you need to borrow someone's tool they're going to take one look at your bike and think oh Rather than not letting him borrow that tool, but clean bike, it's, and you, you look after your gear, people see that, they'll lend you stuff. Yeah, that's loose, let's tighten that up. So, I'll put the side cover back on, that's quite straightforward, just clips straight in. Get it on the bottom first, let it clip in there, and it will pop in there. There's one in the middle. You make sure they clip in. There we are. Clips in. We do have to watch as it. And again, give it a good wipe down. So, I've put the side guard back on, put the slug cover back on, and also the bash plate. Um, there's one bolt underneath for the bash plate. Uh, always put Loctite on that one. Um, if you don't, it will come off mid-ride, so put it on, tighten it up, let it dry, um, and that should hold. Uh, bash plate's one of the most important bits of protective gear, I feel. For the bottom of the bike, um, you're going over logs, a good quality one makes a difference. Uh, I'll uh, charge up the battery and then uh, later on, or sorry, early on next week, I'll fill the bike up, start it, make sure everything runs okay, but, um, just so it's ready for the trip away. So I've placed the trickle charger on the 
on the bike, I'll let it uh, do its thing overnight. I don't, um, I don't normally um, leave it on all the time. I'm not a fan of that. I'll let them, the batteries will drain down a certain percentage every day, so I'll let it drain down. Then once a month, I'll put the trickle charger on. I'll do that for the Ducati as well. Uh, the Guzzy gets started regular enough where it doesn't need it. Uh, all that's left to do now is um, I've got to put on the other steg peg, uh, which I've ordered the um, the pass to do, so I'll put that on before I finish up. I'll give it another wipe down, and uh, then she's pretty much, um, I think I said earlier, I'll fuel it up and start it uh, midweek, make sure there's no issue. Uh, the next, I suppose another big bit is uh, packing up, so put all your gear away, make sure make sure your, your tools are accounted for you haven't misplaced anything well still it's not stuck somewhere on the bike that you can get damaged or lost and that's pretty much it uh looking forward to the ride on the weekend and um hopefully i'll have some good footage of it i'll speak to you next time bye now